Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. O oh, that today you would listen to His voice. Psalm 95, verses 6 and 7. This is a Pittsburgh 12-volt uh, air compressor, 100 PSI, high volume. Um, recently, when I was trying to pump up the tires on my vehicle, this uh, compressor was just running and running and running and running and really didn't seem to be building any pressure. I wasn't pumping up the tire. And uh, I've noticed it, you know, kind of deteriorating over time. And I wanted to see if I could take this thing apart and um, figure out if uh, something was causing it to behave this way. So uh, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the screws out. Okay, and I have had to kind of do a repair on this line because uh, it actually, the insulation that was on there was kind of cheap, so it kind of uh, broke through. So you can see on this end, it's uh, looks like just electrical contactors for the motor. And you can see my insulation is kind of pulled away a little bit there, but it's still intact. So... That was mainly just for curiosity to show you what was on that end. So if you're having electrical issues, you might take this cover off and check uh, to make sure that you're still connected to the motor, but probably wouldn't be running in that case. And there's just these two long screws there. So now we're going to go to the other end. And there's three more screws here. So inside there is the is the uh, crank on the end of the motor. It kind of makes the piston move up and down. You can see as I turn that. And now I'm going to take the uh, little rubber piece off of this air gauge just because it's going to give me more clearance to get these screws out right here. There's four of those. So you can see that there is a seal right around here and there's a couple of valves it looks like on the piston itself that uh, obviously open and close so that the piston will allow the air to be compressed, they act like check valves. And so this is just a cooling ring, it looks like. And this is actually the piston sleeve, which comes off like so. So just looking down inside this piston sleeve, um, looks like there's a definite dark pattern where the piston has been running. And then maybe a little blow-by spot there or something. And that's a little better picture. So that's the inside. So if you look at this piston, um, 
there's like a some kind of a fiber ring here and it's kind of light color on that side but on this other side it's kind of dark and that dark stuff maybe somewhat oily it's black so I doubt you can get a replacement for that thing um, but my thought was that maybe some of this black gunk that's on the piston may, may be uh, inhibiting the proper sealing of that piston. So I thought maybe I'd clean that off and, uh, and put it back together and then try to see if that made any difference. So after I cleaned this or wiped it off a little bit, I noticed that there's quite a discrepancy in the gap on this side and this side. So it might explain why it was all black on one side and not, not really uh, on the other side. So what I also noticed here is that there's a snap ring right on the end of that shaft. Okay, so what I did to get this loose was I pried on the end of it with this bigger screwdriver. And then if you see this little slot right there, I stuck the little screwdriver in that slot. And I was just able to work that thing off of there. You can see it's just a little C-shaped ring. And then that piston comes right off. And then there's two screws on the bottom, which I'm going to take off. And there you go. So if I had another one, I'd ideally just replace it. But since I don't, um, continue to clean off that grease or whatever it was. And the other thing that I noticed on the bottom of this piston next to the valve hole there is there's this black spot, kind of like it's been uh, doing something different than the other side there so okay another thing that I noticed about this valve on the side where the the black mark was over here if I just take my screwdriver and push it open Notice a little bit of debris right there on the edge, which might have kept that thing from closing all the way, which might have been the real reason why it wasn't working right. And it looks like that debris has just dropped off of there, so maybe I won't take those things off and I'll just put it back together and see what happens. Another thing that I noticed here is that uh, there's kind of this burr or, uh, on the part line of the mold there. It's kind of a defect. And I may just try to file that off so that that's nice and smooth. Don't know how much that will affect the performance of it, but uh, it's probably not the best thing for proper operation. So another thing I decided to do is just take a little piece of cloth and slide it 
under there so I could kind of move this thing back and forth just to make sure there's there was any debris on there I could uh, clean that off and so to clean that little burr off of there I just took this uh, sanding block and just kind of made a circular motion it seemed like it was pretty soft metal so um, it was not too difficult to clean that off one thing that I uh, wanted to mention here is that um, I took this pick it's got a point on the end of it and I went around these threads this is the piston I went around these threads because there was uh, some sort of thread locker in there and I cleaned all of that out so that these screws would uh, would go in about that far which is about three turns um, and then I'm gonna get some Loctite or something and uh, when I reassemble this I'm gonna put that in there because I'm afraid that if, uh, if those screws aren't locked in they're gonna come loose and uh, that would not be a good thing so I'm gonna try this Loctite 242 I'm gonna put it in the in the holes here I think I've still got some in here and I'm gonna install this first Trying to get that as centered as possible before I tighten it down. Well, I guess that's as good as I'm going to get it. I did try to see if there was a uh, another piston ring available and they told me that there are no parts available for this unit, so I guess you just have to cobble it back together as best you can. And I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to install this back on here. And install the snap ring. Installing the snap ring with the pliers hopefully will be a little easier. There we go. So not really knowing what kind of uh, lubricant that I should use on this piston. I'm just going to use some motor oil. Inside the cylinder and uh, one note about this is that one side is kind of squared off and the other side is tapered so I'm putting the taper end on the piston here it seems to slide on a little easier and then it just goes down sets in that recess there Put this heat exchanger ring on there and put these screws back in there. 
Now these have lock washers on the top. So I'm going to assume that's going to be sufficient without Loctite. I didn't notice any Loctite residue on it when I took it apart. So I'm trying to tighten these down crisscross. I'm not sure that's necessary, but Won't hurt anything. Okay, we'll just put the two covers back on. Pop my little rubber ring back on there, and we'll give it a go. Well, it's working. It's building pressure. So it looks like the repair was successful.